now to leadership. In business and in politics, Africa needs strong leadership more than ever. Leading Business School in Africa, Henley Business School is one of those organizations who work with its businesses to develop its leaders and critical thinking that is required. The Dean, Professor John Foster Petley, is here to expand on this for us. Prof, good morning to you and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Pallesa. Great pleasure to be here. What Thank a great you. subject, too. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. My first question, what is a leader? That's a great question because you could have somebody who's a leader and everyone follows, but you wish they didn't follow them. And we see some of those these days in politics internationally. But to me, a leader is somebody who represents something great, something aspirational for us, and something fundamentally good and hopeful. So I'm not, uh, I don't like to call those leaders who work on negativity and pessimism as great leaders. Mm -hmm. The ones who are leaders to me are the ones who lift our lives and, and free us to try higher things and give us encouragement. All right. So you're also telling me that the fact that I have a four-year-old four son, it means that I'm, I am a leader to my son. Absolutely. That's a great example because most people think, well, I've got to be born a leader. Mm. But most of us are parents. How do you become a better leader to your children? How do you become a better mother and a better father? You, that doesn't happen overnight. You practice, you fail, you pull yourself together again, you lift yourself forward. You know you can't let your child down. That child depends on you, so you have to become something greater. So are you basically saying that there's no such a thing as being born a leader? You, you've got I, to work your way throughout. I think like, in, like a talent, like a great musician or a great sports person, mm -hmm. some people are born with those characteristics. But what it means is that we can all become great leaders. It's a matter of choice. So good leadership to me is something you, you work on all your life, and it makes you a greater person as well. And leadership is based in service. If you're not serving somebody, if you're serving yourself, and we see a lot of talk about narcissistic leaders these days, mm. particularly internationally, then what sort of leader are you? You have to serve other people. You have to build. And the other great characteristic of a good leader is somebody who produces something. Rhetoric isn't enough. If you're elected into a position these days or if you choose to take a position, you have to deliver. Without delivery, what are you? You're just hot air. So it's the hard, hard work of discipline, creating things, implementation, humility, yeah. and taking criticism. You can't be thin-skinned if you're a great leader because you have to open yourself up to criticism because who's perfect? And I believe everything goes with critical thinking, which actually brings me to, to my next question. What is critical thinking? Well, people often think critical thinking is, being, is criticizing and mm. being negative. It's not at all. Critical thinking is, is, is intelligent thinking, seeing multiple sides of a problem, not just your own point of view, but me listening to you, me listening to my children or the people who work with us, understanding their point of view and putting all that together with the best possible perspective. So it really is about being inclusive and understanding and then intelligently seeing beyond your own prejudices. And, un and a great way of looking at it is, am I, am I clean inside? Am I clear? Do I know what I'm doing? Am I being honest? Am I being truthful? And am I serving people? If you're doing that, you're on, well on the way to being a good critical thinker. All right, so you've got to start with introspection first. I think introspection is really important, isn't it? Mm. I mean, we all think leadership's about activism, but if you're not looking at yourself and accepting criticism and reflecting on who you are and trying to improve yourself, how can you be a great leader? And that's why all of us can be leaders. And I really hope we, we have new people stepping up, young people stepping into political and business leadership in South Africa, because all our children, all our children are out of school together, we're working together. What we're looking for is an inclusive, positive South Africa that's really going to take its place in the world. We're not looking about anyone leading that from any other, any other perspective than capability, honesty and fairness. All right. Now, just before we came on, AU and I were talking about the former president, Dr. Nelson Mandela. You were saying that he actually became a leader throughout all the years. It's, it's not something that just happened to him overnight. Okay. Now, what can you attest to being a great leader, specifically in Africa, someone that you admire? Well, of course I admire Nelson Mandela. He's, <laughs> we he's all do, don't we? He's really? extraordinary. Mm. Um, musically, there are some fantastic musicians. Hugh Masekela, great leader. Uh, Johnny Clegg, um, they're, they're leaders in different ways. And you're starting to see new leaders emerge. And 
I love people like Fred Swanaker, who runs African Leadership Academy, who, who, are, who are dedicated to education. We talk about black economic empowerment, but we need, we need black and white, everybody's black, education empowerment. If we don't get educated, we're going to be not knowing who's pulling the strings and why. We have to step in, take education, and we, all of us have got to be leaders. And if we look behind our shoulders, there's nobody there. We have to step up to being a leader, being honest, and try and make a, a better South Africa. And I do believe that we do have such uh, examples here in South Africa. It's not just about politicians, isn't it? Absolutely not. We've got sports people, we've got people in business, and, and it doesn't matter who you look at. I mean, look at the mayoral race now. You know, you've got two great people, Pakistan, Herman Mashaba, very different characters, both people of substance. You know, whatever your political affiliation, if you step back and look at them, those are people who are both people of great achievement, people we need to respect and understand. All right. But, uh, Prof, how is the business school going to develop those critical thinking skills that you're talking about this morning? Well, Henny Business School is, is a large international business school, and we've thought about this deeply. And one of the things we do, we teach people system thinking. That means not just seeing how you see things, but how, but, but how you do, how I do, how the person behind that camera does, how the, the leaders of the organization do. How do we get a rich picture? So to, be, to develop critical thinking, you practice that. You practice seeing things systemically, understand it's, it's like having a cold. You can take a pill, but maybe you should eat better food and take more exercise to build up your resilience. Mm. System thinking understands the drivers of things, not just the symptoms. Thinking beyond thinking. Thinking beyond <laughs> thinking. That's a great way of putting it, Pelle. So, yeah. Prof, that's where we're going to leave it this morning, but thank great. you so much for your time. Thank you. I thank you very much indeed. There you have it. Uh, Professor John Forster Petley. He is uh, the Dean and Director at Henley Business School of Africa University of Reading in the UK, talking to us about critical thinking and what makes a good leader. All right, it's time now to check in with Phil as to how things are looking again on the weather desk. Phil, I don't know, is it because I have flu, I'm hot, or temperatures are starting to get warmer? Good morning to you.